Hey there, I'm Cyberchroma, and today I will be teaching you the basics of Unity's interface system. We will make toggles, dropdowns, scroll bars, and more, and experiment with different uses. This tutorial is for beginners at UI, but we'll gloss over some of the programming involved that doesn't have to do with UI. Ready? Let's get started! In a new Unity project, we will start by quickly setting up everything in our scene to prepare for what our UI will do. We will make a cube, move it to 000, then rotate it to 45450. We have a lot to cover, so I have already made a few folders in the project window to speed things up. In the materials folder, we have three colors for blue, green, and red. Let's give our cube the blue material. Now let's move the camera to get a better view of our cube, at 0, 0, negative 5. Now let's change the background color of our camera, by changing skybox to solid color. Now let's set the color to, how about a pale yellow. That should be good. Now let's make our first UI element. Let's start simple with some text on the screen. We can go to UI, Text. Now we have our text, and we can see a few other things have been added. A canvas that our text is under, and an event system. Simply put, the canvas is like another screen overlaid on the screen we view the game through, that all of our user interface objects are on. And the event system has code on it that will allow our UI elements to do stuff when we interact with them. Before we mess with our UI, there is one option we will want to change on our canvas. Selecting the canvas and going to the component Canvas Scaler, we will change UI Scale Mode from Constant Pixel Size to Scale with Screen Size. Doing this will make it so if we were to resize the game window, the UI will get larger or smaller, as it should. While we're at it, let's also click this button that says Free Aspect and change it to 16 by 9. This is the aspect ratio, which keeps the width and height of the screen proportional to each other. On our text, we have a lot of things to play around with. If you do any writing in programs like Word, you should recognize most of these. We can move the text around in the Rec Transform component, which is similar to the normal transform. We can change the text to whatever we want, and change things like the size, color, and even make it bold. With our text in place, now let's make something that we can use as a background for our UI elements. We can go up to Create, UI, Panel. When we first create it, it looks like the screen has simply been tinted, but we actually now have a transparent image covering the screen. By default, it is a rounded rectangle, but you can replace the image to anything you want. The Rec Transform looks a bit different, and has some different options. That is because, looking at the square beside it, it is set to stretch across the screen. With these numbers for left, top, right, and bottom, then being offsets. Clicking this square, we can change how it is anchored, which means we can change where this object's origin is, like the top left of the screen, or the bottom right, for example. This can be done on any UI element. You can select one of these options to change the anchor point and how it stretches. As this text along the top says, you can also hold Shift or Alt to also change its position and pivot points as well. For the most part, this is something that you just have to play around with and get a feel for what's right. I will set this panel's anchor to the top center. In its image component, let's change its color and the nonsensical color of the day will be a purple color. We will also change the alpha slider to make it less transparent. For our text to be on top, we will want to reorder the game objects in the hierarchy so that the panel is above the text. Let's also rename the text to title text. I will also rename the panel to top panel, as that is what this will be. For organization, let's make the text a child object of the panel. Let's now move it and change its width and height.
Then we will duplicate this top panel and make a bottom one. Let's rename it as such. Now let's move it down. We've made some fancy stuff to display information on the screen, but now let's make something that we can interact with. We will start with a button, so let's create that. We see our new button has two parts, the button and a text component that we've already covered as a child. The button has an image, just like the panel, and a button component. You can change whether it is interactable, useful for if you want to disable the button through code for whatever reason, and you can change how the color tints in these different states that the button can be in, such as when the mouse is over the button and when it is being pressed. You can also change the transition type if you want to swap out images or play animations instead, or you can do things manually in code. We will stick with the defaults. This blank box is how we will make the button do something when it is pressed. More specifically, we can write some code and make it so that when we press the button, that code will be called. So let's do some coding. In our scripts folder, I have already created a script, UI controller, that will control all of our UI elements. Let's have a look. Opening it up, there is a lot of stuff here that does a lot of different things, but we will start by focusing only on the parts that control our button. We are going to make it so that when we press our button, our level will reset. So if we move our cube, or mess with any of the other UI elements we are going to create, they will go back to their original positions. To write code that the button will run, we can make a public function that we can call whenever we want, and have the code we want to run in there. I've created this function, just called button for the organization of this tutorial, but you may want to rename it something more descriptive to what it does, like reset level or something like that. To reload the scene, we first at the top add unityengine.sceneManagement. Then in our function type sceneManager.loadScene0. This will be all we need for our button, and we will cover the rest in a moment. But for now, let's return to Unity. To be able to reload the scene, there is one small thing we need to do first that I will skim over quickly. Going over to File and Build Settings, in this window that opens up, we can then click Add Open Scenes so that our level is in this list here as Scene 0. With our code ready, we first need to assign it to the button for it to work. And to do that, we need to have our code be on an object in the scene. We can close this window and create an empty game object that we will call UI Controller. Then we can drag our code onto it. Now let's go over to our button. In this blank area, we can hit this plus button to add a function for it to run. Then we'll add our UI controller game object into this field. In the dropdown beside it, we can now select a function on any of its components, including the script we created. We can assign it to our button function. If the function had any inputs, we can then add those, which allows you to use the same function for different buttons by changing that input. And now our button should be functional, so let's hit play and test it. If we select our cube and move it around in the transform, then hit our button, it resets the scene and puts the cube back to its original position as we wanted it to. Perfect. Going out of play mode, let's now style our button a bit and move it around. We will change things like its color and text, and even rename it to reset button. We will also make it a child object of our top panel as we did with our text. Now that we understand text and buttons, the rest of the UI elements that Unity offers are simply extensions of these, with more options that's good for experimentation. We will go over each of them in Unity, then hop over to our code to get them to do different things. Let's start with the toggle, which we can create in the same way, and is like a button, but can be checked on or off, which is treated as a boolean in code. Other than that, it has transitions and a text label just like the button. Next, we have the slider. 
We can select this circle and drag it left and right, which fills up this bar. This has many more options. We can change the direction it fills up, set a min and max value for the slider, whether it can only move in increments of whole numbers, and even change the background and foreground. If we wanted this to have a label, we would have to create another text component to put around it. You could also delete the circle part and make it non-interactable to change values only in code. This could be useful for making a player health bar. Now we will move on to the scroll bar, which is very similar, but without the background, and slightly different default images. We'll put this on the bottom panel. Next, we have a dropdown. It can be selected and has transition states similar to a button, but then brings up a list of different options to choose between. These options can all be customized, including the number of options. This again has text and images that can be changed and tinted. Lastly, let's look at the input field. Here, we can get the user to type in different text, and in the editor, we have a few text-related options, like setting the default text, how many letters we can type in, allowing us to only enter numbers or letters, etc., and even changing the gray placeholder text before we type anything in. Now that we have looked at all the UI options that Unity has to offer, let's give them some functionality, so we can change our scene in different ways. Going over the rest of our code here now, we first get references to a bunch of objects. The cube we created, the light in our scene, the camera, and then the three materials that were created. The rest are references to some of our UI elements, so we can access certain information on them. To deal with UI stuff, we first need to, at the top, add using UnityEngine.UI. For our toggle, which will make the cube visible or invisible, we change the cube's active state to the value of the toggle, which changes between true and false each time it is clicked. On our slider, we change the intensity of the light based on the slider's value, which makes the scene brighter or dimmer. On our scroll bar, we change the camera's field of view to be wider or narrower based on its values. For the dropdown, we will have three options to change the cube's color between blue, green, and red. We swap out the colors by getting a reference to the cube's mesh renderer component and changing its material. We can use dot value to see which option the user has pressed, which starts with 0 being the first option, 1 being the second, and so on. Lastly, our input field copies the text that the user has set, and changes the title text we created. All of these functions must be public for the UI elements to call them, but can be named whatever you want. With all this code explained, let's go back to Unity. Speeding things up, we can assign those functions to our different UI elements in the same way that we did with the button. As well, I am setting up some other settings on other game objects, such as the camera and light, so they will work as we want them to. And changing the mins and max on our slider and scroll bar. As well, I am adding some labels to some of our UI elements that lacked them, and renaming things over in the hierarchy, and childing things where they should be, for organization. Lastly, we can give our UI elements some more style by coloring them, to match the style of our first button. With our UI elements complete and stylized, we can hit play and test our UI. And now we have made a lot of UI elements that do a lot of different things. Now that you've seen a bit of what Unity's interface system can do, try giving your games more polish by adding a main menu, level select, or even a pause screen. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have ideas for tutorials that you want to see, please suggest them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you around!